What's going on everybody? Brezzy43 here. I am back uh, with our next video. Uh, we are in the middle of doing our team building videos. We've been team building with uh, restricted Pokemon each video. Um, now that the uh, now that Series 10 is available on Showdown, um, in the future videos I will be doing some battling as well on them just to kind of show you how some of the games play out. Um, we're not done with that. We've done um, our three the big three, in my opinion, Zacian, Xerneas, and Kyogre. Um, not necessarily going to be the best three, um, but they are going to be the most popular and the ones that I think are the strongest, at least out the gates of this series. Um, in our future videos, we're going to be talking about a lot of the other ones, Restricteds. I've got teams that I've been brewing up for all the other ones as well. Um, so we're going to definitely be diving into those. But today, I wanted to talk about something a little different. Um, it is still in the realm of team building. Today, we're going to be talking about speed control. Um, speed control is a very, very popular or very, uh, important, I should say, um, component of team building. Speed control is the blanket term that VGC players use when referring to basically just ensuring that your Pokemon get to attack before your opponents, right? Pokemon is a, ga is a game of different pieces or Pokemon that, um, have different stats and the move order is determined by the speed stat, right? Which Pokemon's fastest gets to go first. Um, and so having ways of either increasing your team speed or reducing your opponent's speed um, or Trick Room, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, gives you a huge ad advantage strategically because if you get to attack before your opponent's Pokemon, you have a chance of knocking them out and they don't even get to attack for the turn, right? So it's very, very important and often crucial even to a team to have one or multiple ways of controlling speed in, um, in any situation, right? You want to have the ability to make your Pokemon faster or slow down your opponent's Pokemon or whatever um, in multiple different scenarios. Now, up until this point in all of Generation 8, um, because of Dynamax, we've been able to control our speeds very easily. We've been spoiled. Um, Max Airstream was unquestionably the strongest Dynamax move that was available to us. Um, I don't think a lot of people would, would dispute that. There's a reason why most people run Jolly or Timid over things like Adamant and Modest in terms of nature is because attacking first in Pokemon is just that important. And Max Airstream was a really strong way of controlling speed because both you and your, both of your active Pokemon got an increased uh, stage to their speed by one. Well, that's been removed. So now we have to go back to the drawing board and start thinking about other forms of speed control that we can utilize to help our teams attack first. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. I went ahead and pulled up a few lists of some Pokemon here we're going to touch on really briefly um, for all the different forms of speed control. So first and foremost, we're going to be talking about Tailwind. Tailwind is... Um, a status that affects the battlefield and that affects your side of the ally, the battlefield for four turns your allies pokemon speed is doubled so um it basically ensures that you'll be outspeeding your opponent and being able to attack first these three pokemon i have up in front of me here are um the priority tailwind setters they're referred to as priority or prankster tailwind setters so Whimsicott and Tornadus both have the ability Prankster, which increases their, their non-damaging moves priority by one, which means that they will get to Tailwind first, even if something like Regilecki's on the field because of Prankster, right? Regilecki has a base 200 speed stat, Whimsicott only has 116, but because of Prankster giving that, that plus one priority, it will be able to go for Tailwind first before Regilecki can attack. Similarly to Tornadus, um, Tornadus has Tailwind and Prankster and just as different typing and different stats than Whimsicott. The other Pokemon that I wanted to touch on here is Talonflame. Even though Talonflame doesn't have the actual ability Prankster, Talonflame does get the ability Gale Wings, which if this Pokemon's at full HP, its flying type moves have their, impri their priority increased by one. So any offensive flying moves like Hurricane or Brave Bird on Talonflame in conjunction with Tailwind um, will give those, as long as you're at full HP, will allow you to move first because of your ability. So that's that's the what people refer to as the Prankster Setters. Now these, these Pokemon have a bit of a trade-off, at least in the form of Whimsicott and to some extent Talonflame. They don't, they're not very they're pretty frail, they're not very bulky, and they don't have a ton of damage capability. As you can see, Talonflame has base 81 attack and Whimsicott has base 77 special attack. So generally you're going to want to be looking to moves like Moonblast um, or Brave Bird 
to be able to deal the most damage possible um, with your with your Pokemon because in VGC it's really important to make sure that all four Pokemon that you bring to the battle have a consistent way a consistent form of dealing damage right that's like rule number one so these Pokemon are not as frail and they aren't as offensive but they do one thing very very well um, which is set up Tailwind at at the fastest means possible. In Generation 8, they introduce Dynamic Speed, which means that speed mechanics update mid-turn. So in the past, if you went for a Tailwind, your team didn't get the benefits of the Tailwind until the subsequent turn. But now with the with the inclusion of Dynamic Speed, speed updates mid-turn. So if you are able to go for a Tailwind, it doesn't matter if your Pokemon is um, Tyranitar or Kyogre. Um, it's going to outspeed the Regieleki if its speed stat doubled outspeeds that Poke that other Pokemon's or the target's base speed stat, if that makes sense. So that's really, really interesting. And that was a huge draw to these Prankster Tailwind setters was the dynamic speed. Um, being able to set up Tailwind super quickly, take advantage of that speed boost right away was a huge draw to these Pokemon, despite their lackluster offensive capabilities. Now, if you notice, I only talked about... Um, Whimsicott and Talonflame in that, in that, um, oh, Talonflame should not be here, excuse me. Uh, I only talked about Whimsicott and, and Talonflame as the frailer and lesser of the offensive capabilities instead of Tornadus, because Tornadus actually has 125 base special attack. So it's pretty common for Tornadus to run Hurricane um, or and or Heat Wave and sometimes even Icy Wind, which is another form of speed control that we'll get to later, that will actually deal reasonable damage because it has such a high special attack stat. So Tornadus is a really nice Pokemon in that it can set Tailwind, and it can also be an offensive threat. The other two Pokemon that I wanted to talk about as being offensive Tailwind setters are Crobat and Braviary. So Crobat gets access to um, an ability called Inner Focus. Inner Focus makes it so it cannot be flinched, which means it's immune to, uh, to Fake Out. And additionally, this generation is immune to Intimidate. So now you can run a move like Brave Bird, instead of having to run Sludge Bomb, you can run Brave Bird um, and actually have 90 base power Brave Bird um, that's not intimidatable, not fake outable. So this Pokemon can set up Tailwind and can also go for um, really strong Brave Birds into the opponent without fear of being intimidated. Additionally, some good support moves like Taunt, Quick Guard, um, Haze, things like that. Now, Braviary is a slightly different Pokemon that's a, t a slightly different Tailwind setter. Braviary um, has a really unique ability called Defiant. Defiant um, says that this Pokemon's at attack is raised by two stages for each of its stats that's lowered by a foe. So it has to be lowered by a foe, but if your opponent intimidates Braviary with something like Incineroar, Braviary will actually get a two-stage increase after the one-stage reduction, effectively giving it a plus one increase to its attack. Um, which can make it really difficult to slow down, especially when you pair it with something offensive. So for example, I've been looking at Braviary plus Groudon. Um, those two Pokemon work really nicely together because Braviary is weak to Rock and Electric, which Groudon's very good against, um, and Groudon's weak to um, Grass as one of its two weaknesses, which Braviary is quite good into. Um, but Braviary deters your opponent from intimidating your Groudon because of Defiant. So you can't intimidate and weaken my Groudon without boosting up my Braviary. So Braviary gets some really nice coverage moves. It does get Brave Bird. In addition to that, it gets Rockside and Close Combat, which are both really nice moves. Moving on, we've got some support Tailwind setters here that I wanted to talk about. Um, so Mandibuzz and Drifblim play very similarly on a lot of teams. They are they are supportive, disruptive Pokemon that are really good at slowing the pace of the game down. Um, so Mandibuzz historically has often been run with a seed, whether it's Psychic Seed or Misty Seed or now Grassy Seed that we have Rillaboom. But what these seeds do is they they get consumed um, if the use if the holder is in the corresponding terrain. Um, and they increase a defense stat by one stage. So Overcoat is almost always going to be the, the ability because it makes you immune to Sleep Powder and Rage Powder and Spore and Hail and stuff like that. But you can actually, you can actually um, become very, very bulky with these stats. And between with the combination of Tailwind to increase your speed, Snarl to weaken your opponent's special attackers, Foul Play to, to punish their physical attackers, and then a move like Roost... Um, 
or taunt can make this Pokemon very disruptive and very difficult to deal with for your opponent. Similar to that is Drifblim, but Drifblim takes advantage of the seed a little bit better than Mandibuzz does. Drifblim's ability is called Unburden. Unburden says that if you've lost your item uh, or you've consumed it, you get to double your speed. Um, so if you use a seed, like Grassy Seed, and your partner is Rillaboom, you will consume your seed, you'll get your boost, and you will also get a double speed, um, effectively giving you um, 200 base speed, just, just to start off. Um, additionally, you've got Shadow Ball for good stab option, you've got Will-O-Wisp, you've got... Um, this thing does get Hypnosis, if you're into Hypnosis, it also gets Strength Sap. Unfortunately, it does not get Taunt. Excuse me, but it does get a lot of other good moves. Clear Smog or Haze, um, Protect, Substitute. Really strong moves that Driftbloom gets. These two Pokemon almost always play out the same way. We're giving it one of these seeds. It's going to be the one, of, probably the best way to use it. Um, and then they become very bulky, very difficult to deal with Tailwind Setters that can really slow down the pace of the game. Additionally, you have Suicune. Suicune um, received a, in a slight buff to... Um, with the introduction of the ability patch, allowing it access to its hidden ability, Inner Focus. It doesn't care as much about Intimidate, but it is uh, immune to flinching, which is really nice. Um, really bulky water type, 100 HP and 115 in both defenses that can set up Tailwind. Um, additionally, 90 special attack is pretty reasonable considering you've got access to Snarl, Scald, um, Icy Wind if you want it, Ice Beam if you want it. Really strong, um, really good, bulky Pokemon here. And the last one I wanted to mention um, is Levitate Latias. Um, this Pokemon I wasn't going to mention originally, but it did actually see some usage um, this past weekend. Latias is preferred over Latios because you have better bulk. You've got 90 defense as opposed to 80, and you've got 130 special defense as opposed to 110. Um, but this Pokemon does get access to Tailwind, uh, Mystical Fire, and Draco Meteor for good damage. You've also got moves like Icy Wind. You've got Ally Switch if you want Ally Switch. You've got um, Screens. You've got, um, I believe you get Heal Pulse 2, which is really nice in doubles. Um, but you're probably going to have to run a Culberberry here just to not have to deal with her Shifu. But Latias, uh, because it had recent success this past weekend in the tournaments, I felt like it was worth mentioning. That's going to round out our Tailwind. Um, Tailwind is is really, really common and probably one that you'll run into a lot. But now we're going to talk about Trick Room. Trick Room is probably the other really common um, speed control uh, move that you'll run into. And what it says or what it does is it inverts the speed tiers. So inside of Trick Room, this, the Pokemon with, this, with the lowest speed stat will move first. And the Pokemon with the fastest speed stat will move last for four turns, effectively four turns four turns <clears throat> excuse me and i've highlighted here some supportive trick room setters that i think are worth mentioning dusclops and porygon are very similar pokemon in that they get to carry the ability or the item eviolite eviolite um says that if this pokemon species can evolve so porygon 2 can evolve into Por porygon z and dusclops can evolve into dusk Noir, you actually get it, if you hold this item, you get an increase to your special defense and defense by 1.5 times, which is a really substantial boost. Additionally, you have Trick Room and Recover, which can make this Pokemon very difficult to deal with. Um, download, giving you a special attack boost, makes it so it's you can actually have a reasonable special attack um, damage capabilities should you receive a download boost to your special attack. Dusclops is a bit more of a supportive variation of what Porygon has. Frisk is a really nice doubles ability to, to check items um, when it comes in. Nightshade for good damage output. You've got Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, Pain Split for recovery, really good defenses. This Pokemon, both these Pokemon have seen a ton of usage since being introduced into um, Generation 8, and I don't see that going down anywhere. Mimikyu I'm including on this list because Mimikyu um, was good in Series 8 for the same reasons that I suspect it will be good in Series 10, which is that Disguise makes it a very difficult Pokemon to knock out. Right now, specifically, a lot of these Pokemon, um, or a lot of the Pokemon that offensively pressure Mimikyu um, and could one-hit knock it out are very, very fast Pokemon. Things like Calyrex Shadow, um, Urshifu, things like that. Um, Disguise says that the first hit you take is blocked and it take and mimic you receives one eighth damage instead so it allows you to take ghost attacks without having to worry about 
getting knocked out by them. Um, additionally, if you if you run a mental herb for your item, then you can't be taunted. So it makes it very, very difficult to disrupt this Pokemon and stop it from setting Trick Room. Additionally, you get moves like Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, um, and then you get some really nice offensive moves like Play Rough, Shadow Sneak if you want it, um, Shadow Claw if you want it, Phantom Force as well, um, Wood Hammer, um, and then you also have, uh, um, I said Wood Hammer, you have Swords Dance as well. Swords Dance is kind of an interesting um, move if you want to run an offensive Mimikyu. The last two I've talked about in my previous video, so I'll just touch on them briefly. Gothitel with Shadow Tag preventing switching, Fake Out, and Trick Room can be really, really disruptive and really difficult to, to deal with if you catch your opponent in a bad lead for them. Pretty good defensive stats as well. And then Bronzong functions as a really nice um, Xerneas answer as well. You've got Gyro Ball, um, Trick Room, Body Press, and Iron Defense to be a nice end game on as well off of really reasonable defense stats. Um, levitate making it immune to ground is really nice as well. <clears throat> Next on this list are three offensive trick room setters I wanted to highlight really quickly. <clears throat> Neo Lego I think is a bit of a sleeper Pokemon right now. Neo Lego gets access to Power Gem and Sludge Bomb, making it a pretty reasonable offensive type with the exclusion of being pretty bad into steel types. It hits the rest of the, the metagame pretty, uh, for pretty good damage. If we think about that Xerneas team that I built um, on the channel, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness, um, the Xerneas team I built on the channel has uh, is completely weak to Neolego. So Xerneas does not appreciate Sludge Bombs, also can't really do much damage to you because of how bulky you are on the special side of the spectrum. Um, Volcarona really does not want to take Rock Attacks, Incineroar doesn't really want to take Rock Attacks, Rillaboom doesn't want to take Poison Attacks, Urshifu both forms don't want to take poison attacks because they have such frail special defensive uh, special defense stat, and Regieleki or whoever struggles in Trick Room. So if you can set up Trick Room against Regieleki, then you can have a really nice you can position yourself really nicely. Additionally, there's a lot of Tailwind and a lot of stat boosting going on right now. That even though Neolego has 103 speed, you you can pretty easily leverage Trick Room. Especially if you're not built or if you're not a tail rim, tailwind centric team, that once your opponent goes for some boosts or tries to double their speed, like with Xerneas or whatever, you can set Trick Room and catch them really, really off guard. Especially if the rest of your team takes advantage from Trick Room as well. The other probably most common one that you'll see is going to be Stack Attacka. Stack Attacka has a really nice offensive typing for um, <clears throat> for being able to hit basically everything in the metagame for good damage with the exception of opposing steel types um, but it can set its own trick room and position itself nicely to just be an offensive threat inside of trick room um, not a ton to say about this pokemon other than the fact that it gets wide guard wide guard has a ton of utility in doubles formats so definitely if you see stack attack i suspect wide guard may be on it <clears throat> and lastly is hatterene Hatterene isn't really worth noting too much just because I don't I don't actually know if it's going to be good, but it is technically a sweeper that does take it that can set its own trick room and take advantage of it. Magic Bounce makes it immune to um, opposing taunts and sleep powders and whatnot, so definitely solid. Um, pretty good offensive typing as well, with the exception of, again of being poor into steel types, but you can run Mystical Fire to deal good damage to steel types. So that's going to round up both Tailwind and Trick Room, which I think are going to be the most common. The next couple of things I wanted to highlight are um, Icy Wind users, things like Tapu Fini. We'll see uh, support Tapu Fini will see a rise this generation it, like it did in 2019, um, or this series, I should say. Icy Wind is a move that drops both of your opponent's speed stats by one. Tornadus gets it. Uh, Drift Bloom gets it and Latias gets it. These are Pokemon I already mentioned already, so I'm not going to mention them again. Um, but Tabu Fini, uh, having access to Icy Wind and Nature's Madness makes it a really nice support Pokemon. Um, and Ludicolo gets access to Fake Out and Icy Wind with Swift Swim, making it a really reasonable partner for your Kyogre. Um, you can slow down speed, fake things out, be really disruptive and annoying, and have really strong grass attacks for the opposing water types that um, Kyogre doesn't want to face. The last thing I wanted to talk about is... Um, Electroweb. Electroweb is probably most commonly going to be used on Regieleki, um, even though Tapu Koko and Raichu both get it as well. Um, Electroweb does the same thing as Icy Wind, but as an electric attack, um, and it's really, really backbreaking on Regieleki because Regieleki is so fast. 
one of the drawbacks to these moves is that dropping your opponent's speed is really strong. Um, but because of the, na the new speed mechanics, it's most beneficial to use these moves before your opponent has had a chance to attack. So if you get a chance to electroweb them or icy wind them before they attack, then you might have a chance of your ally Pokemon then being faster after the speed drop and picking up the knockout. Um, I put Thunderous Raichu and Grimmsnarl on this team because Thunderous Raichu and Grimmsnarl have very commonly ran moves to control speed like Scary Face, um, Thunder Wave, um, in the case of Thunderous, Grimmsnarl gets access to Scary Face, and Raichu actually gets both Nuzzle and Electroweb. It might also get Thunder Wave too, but where you would just run Nuzzle um, because it deals damage and has a 100% chance to paralyze. And Electroweb, you know, may miss too. So these are other really common, or uh, they're not really common, they're niche, but they do effectively do the same thing as Icy Wind. So that's going to be the, the majority of the speed control that I wanted to talk about today. We've got, just to recap, we've got Tailwind, which doubles your ally's speed for four turns. We've got Trick Room, which inverts the speed tiers um, for five turns. We've got Icy Wind and Electroweb, which um, drop your opponent's speed by one, but do require you to um, do kind of, you do get more benefit out of, um, out of, attacking first with those Pokemon before uh, before your opponent has had an opportunity to move so you can take the most advantage of it. Just looking at these last teams that I've that I've been building here, if you recall this this Zacian team, we have Bra uh, we have Tailwind Crobat. Um, if you look at this team here, we have um, I think I actually not this one, the the Kyogre version. The Kyogre version I've updated to have Icy Wind Ludicolo. Um, in addition to that, I also have Swift Swim. Um, this one I have, we have Tailwind on Tornadus, and we also have Electroweb on Regieleki, um, which is really strong. On the, um, this Kyogre team that I had brewed up, we have Nuzzle Raichu in addition to Trick Room. So we've got two really good ways of controlling speed there. Um, the Xerneas team, we've got a boosted Xerneas that can control speed, and we have also got multiple fakeouts. Fakeouts kind of function like speed control as well because they stop your opponent from moving. And this Groudon team I was exploring has access to um, Tailwind on Mandibuzz and Trick Room on Stack Attacka. So I don't always follow the same rules when I team build, but generally you, you need to have some form of speed control on your team, whether it's you're a Trick Room team or you're a Tailwind team and you're an offensive team. Um, you don't have to run both Trick Room and Tailwind, though it uh, it has seen really good usage in the past. I know in 2019, the world's winning team had a Tailwind Mega Salamence in addition to having Trick Room on it. Um, in the Dallas Regionals uh, in 2019 for this game, uh, Aaron Trailer had both Tailwind Whimsicott and Trick Room Jellicent. Um, so you can run both. You just have to be very conscientious of your positioning. But it is very common to run um, Tailwind and moves like Icy Wind or Electroweb or running, um, you know, Thunder Wave, Nuzzle, Icy Wind in addition to Trick Room. So definitely keep that in mind when you're team building. I think it's very important to have at least one, if not two, forms of speed control on your team. Um, they don't have to be as polarizing, like I said, as Trick Room and, tail, uh, and Tailwind. You can run Icy Wind or Electroweb or Nuzzle or Thunder Wave or whatever you want to do. Um, but it is important when team building because if you don't have it, you could potentially be punished immensely by um, by your opponent having it and positioning around you not. I've lost countless games um, because I didn't bring my speed control or I didn't have speed control, right? Um, there is such a thing as too much speed control. Um, too much speed control is like maybe you've got Trick Room, Tailwind, and um, Icy Wind or, you know, it's... You don't have to run that much. Um, generally, you want to choose one or two. Um, sometimes having three can work if it's not integral to your strategy, like you're running Assault Vest Raichu, and the best other move you can run is Nuzzle. Um, but generally, one to two is the is the sweet spot. And um, having thinking about the way that your turns play out and how you're going to ensure your team attacks first is definitely the best way of thinking about it. The last thing I wanted to leave you with here before I sign off is the restricted Pokemon that actually learn speed control moves. So Eveltal, I believe, is the only restricted Pokemon right now that learns Tailwind. We can confirm that. 
Yes. Yveltal is the only Uber that learns that learns Tailwind. So uh, in the in 2019, there was a Tailwind Move Tutor that allowed you to teach Pokemon like Lunala, Tailwind, and things like that. Um, but right now in this game, it's just Yveltal. So if you want to have a Uber that has Tailwind, Yveltal's got to be your pick. The rest of these are Trick Room setters. Calyrex Ice gets Trick Room. Dialga gets Trick Room. Lunala gets Trick Room. Lunala is really interesting. I'm, I'm going to end up building a team around Lunala um, and Necrozma Duskmane for that matter. Lunala is really interesting because it, it's very similar to Mimikyu with Shadow Shield. Being able to survive a hit um, and not get knocked out from something that you're even four times weak to in set Trick Room is really, really strong in my opinion. So I'm going to definitely be looking to do that. Um, additionally, Necrozma Duskmane is just a really bulky Trick Room setter that's pretty slow as well. So these, uh, both of these forms get them as well. So Necrozma Dawn Wings and Solgaleo both get Trick Room as well. I didn't include them because I don't think that they're as good as their respective counterparts, but um, I do think that the rest of these could see some play this generation or this series for sure. So. Yeah, um, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed um, this video. This is just a shorter one about just speed control in general. You know, Making sure that you have it on your team is really important and making sure that you keep in mind attacking first is probably the, the biggest strategic advantage you can give yourself in Pokemon. And um, when you're building a team, if you don't have any way of guaranteeing that you get to attack first, you may want to revisit and maybe remove or tweak some Pokemon to um, allow you to have access to that. So... Thank you again so much for watching. Um, leave a like, uh, comment, let me know what you think about uh, this video. Let me know if I missed any any uh, Tailwind or Trick Room setters that you feel like are worth noting. Um, I felt like I included a lot of the really good ones, but maybe I missed a couple that you want to point out. Um, and I will catch you all in the next video where we will be doing some more team building, um, most likely with um, either Groudon or a Veltal. So I will uh, catch you all later.